Gunfire outside of downtown Dallas Federal Building this morning, sending people looking for cover and leaving the gunman dead. The Dallas Morning News has confirmed the man hiding behind the wall is one of their photographers. Hours later, Fort Worth SWAT storms the suspect's apartment looking for any evidence that could lead officials to some kind of motive. Thanks for joining us at 4 o'clock, everyone. I'm Ken Molestina. I'm Doug Dunbar in for Gilma today. So we are told right now that one federal employee has some superficial injuries and has already been treated and released. So that's good as far as injuries. That, uh, now to how this all unfolded earlier this morning. First reports of gunfire. They came in around 8:40 this morning. It was right outside the Earl Cabell Federal Building, right at Commerce Street and Griffin Street in downtown Dallas. Authorities later identified the gunman as 22-year-old Brian Clyde. This is a photograph from his Facebook page. Our crews are all across North Texas today. Got every angle of the story covered. We are going to get underway at 4 o'clock here with Steve Pickett. Details on what happened and the investigation that is now fully underway. Steve. Well, federal authorities, Doug, telling us in the last 20 minutes, they're focused right now on why, trying to find the why on why this man did this. As you mentioned, he had enough ammunition to kill dozens of people when he walked to the south side of this building. Inside the federal building, more than 300 employees. He never got on the inside, but 22-year-old Brian Isaac Clyde is now dead. and. Federal investigators are now searching. It was just before, as you mentioned, nine this morning, people seeing an armed man and tactical gear heading toward the federal building entrance. This is what one tenant across the south entrance of the Cabell building recorded. Oh. Shots fired. We we know officers with the Federal Protective Service who guard this building got into that gunfight with Brian Clyde. People were frankly running for their lives. Dallas police and sheriff's deputies moving in to shut down the area around the building. Two Dallas residents either coming or leaving this building this morning. We spoke with them. They say that gunman only focused on this federal building. Now, authorities here saying they have interviewed family members of, of that man exploring his social media posts and they still don't have an answer. As far as w what he was trying to do, I mean, we don't know that completely right now. We're still reviewing video. We're still talking to witnesses. Uh, but, but, had, but for the actions of the Federal Protective Service officers, this likely would have been a very deadly incident. When I proceed, uh, turned around to my left side, I proceeded to see a guy running across the street shooting an AR-15 assault rifle aiming at the federal building. An aggressive matter. He was fatigued down. Uh, we are told Brian Clyde's car, uh, there was a detonation by Dallas police. There was concern about explosives in that car. The FBI, U.S. Attorney's Office telling us they did not find any other weapons or explosives in that car. A lot of people in the middle of all of this, including tenants just to the south of the federal building, are J.D. Miles live on that side of this story with more. J.D.? See, people who live in this building right here had a bird's eye view of what was happening on the ground when shots were fired. Their cell phone videos will be crucial evidence in this investigation. Shots fired, shots fired. This is what Tim Brown saw from his eighth floor window. As I'm making my coffee, I start hearing what it sounded like fireworks because it was pretty quick. He had, looked like he had a mask on. That's when I realized it's definitely not SWAT. Uh, and then he started shooting inside the courthouse. We got SWAT coming through. Holy crap. Brown's video is one of the few that captured the gunshots fired into the federal courthouse. This video, recorded by another resident, captured the moments after authorities shot the suspect with their weapons still drawn, worried there might be others. The suspect's rifle can be seen on the pavement while officers secured the scene. It was all over really quick. It looked like he was shooting blindly, so I'm just glad all of our first responders were okay, unlike two years ago. George, Rebecca, and other residents were quickly evacuated from their lofts by authorities and forced to wait outside on a sidewalk where they were still trying to process what they heard heard and saw. So I walked downstairs and literally looked like a war zone. There was people walking around with like all this gear, uh, helmets, and then, you know, machine guns out. I don't know. I actually don't know how to feel. Uh, I moved in here this weekend, actually, uh, and uh, this is the first 
think that's happened, so um, it's, it's kind of uh, crazy. A number of the residents we spoke with say this experience was an eerie reminder of the downtown Dallas sniper attack on police officers three years ago. More on that and whether or not these residents still feel safe living next to a federal courthouse coming up at 5. Live in Dallas, J.D. Miles, CBS 11 News. All right, J.D., thank you very much for that. And, folks, if you have any information that may help the authorities, you're being encouraged right now to contact them. You can call them at 1-800-CALL-FBI or submit video and photographs to tips.fbi.gov. So in the aftermath, of course, of the shooting, anxious community members now saying, what's going on here? we got a 22-year-old guy. What was the motive? The search for answers still going on as we speak. Robbie Owens has been knocking on a lot of doors this afternoon, talking to a lot of people as well. Robbie, what have you found out? Well, Doug, we've confirmed that Brian Clyde's father lives here in this Plano neighborhood, but the suspect rented an apartment in Fort Worth just weeks ago. So, of course, agents wanted to dig around there and backed with support from Fort Worth PD's SWAT unit. They were there, and with them, they were able to search that unit. Here's some video of that all unfolding there earlier today. Now, of course, agents are also looking to talk to the suspect's father here in Plano. He was not at home when the FBI arrived this morning. A friend of the family there at the time says he wasn't even aware of the downtown shooting and agents didn't explain why they were there asking questions. A search of Brian Clyde's Facebook page revealed a number of disturbing posts, including this video posted on the page just last Sunday. I don't know how much longer I have, but the storm is coming. However, I'm not without defense. Ready? Let's do it. So, was he referring to the severe weather last weekend or a plan to kill innocents at the downtown federal building? The page also had pictures of high capacity magazines and what appeared to be a sword with the caption, quote, a modern gladius to defend the modern republic. So what did it all mean? So many have taken to social media today to question why family and friends didn't ask those questions sooner. We are, of course, continuing to dig for more, including his connection to Dallas. We know that he went to high school there, and we've also confirmed that Clyde was a member of the military. He served in the Army for two years, was discharged in 2017. We will have more for you, of course, coming up at 5 and 6. Reporting live in Plano, Robbie Owens, CBS 11 News.